from PRX. Friends beyond binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and my bakers. Hello, bakers. It's time for sleep with me, or you're not a baker. Uh, maybe you're like a, like a, I don't know, like a, I think I've already said candlestick maker, but uh, if you're in bed, uh, like, uh, I got I kind of tied myself because we're going to later on, we're going to be talking about the great British bake off. That's why. And the great British baking show. What an opportunity. We get to talk about both of them at the same time because it's the same show, just different titles, depending on where you are in the world. And if you wonder where you are in the world, uh, whether your name's Carmen or not, uh, you're in the right place uh, if you're confused, because that, that's uh, how we do it on this show. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. I'm here to keep you company in the deep, dark night, to break through that loneliness or whatever it is, to break through your thoughts, your feelings, your physical sensations, and just give you a friendly voice to listen to that's rambling about nothing because you really do deserve a good night's sleep. And myself and other listeners, we've been there. We know how it feels. So I'm glad you're here. Uh, what we got coming up, this show does take a few tries to get used to. Oh, that's the other thing I'm always supposed to say. It's just a bit different. And structurally, what we got is uh, the uh, support. So the show can come out free for anybody who wants to listen. And then after the support, don't miss out on this, is a long, meandering intro that helps you get to know the show that you could fall asleep to, but it also eases you into bedtime. So that's the intro. Then after the intro, intro is around 15 or 20 minutes long. Then there'll be a support, and then we'll, have, we'll be covering the Great British Bake Off. Um, I don't know if it's at the episode before the finale or the final or the finale with an E. Or, or does every fi- finale have an E in it? Uh, finale. I think so. That's weird because it's just an E at the end. It's just E. Fina- fi- it's not fi- not finally. Some people say that uh, when they stop the podcast uh, or in real life when I stop talking. But welcome to sleep with me. Uh, yeah, I think that's all you need to know. I'm so glad you're here. And I really hope I can help you fall asleep. And these sponsors are how we're able to do it for free twice a week. All right, but Scoot's here, and this is where I talk about, like, supporting the show. So this is really only for regular listeners. If you count on Sleep With Me or you use Sleep With Me on a regular basis, you're a long-term listener. Like, does Sleep With Me do anything unique for you, right? Is it a part of your life in it's a unique way? Like, when you just discovered the show or it started helping you, you're like, wow, I had no idea this existed, but I was looking for it. And then does it provide something for you? Is it unique and does it provide something? Does it do anything for you? Like, does it help you fall asleep or take your mind off of stuff so you could fall asleep? Or does it keep you company? Does it distract you during the day? So is it unique or somewhat unique? And does it do anything for you? If the answer is yes to the, both of those, like how much is that, does that, is that worth anything to you? How much is, are those things, the unique part and whatever it does for you, worth to you? But the other question is like, if sleep with me went away, like what would you be willing, like would that change what it's worth to you? Would it be, would it change the value proposition? Uh, you'd say, well, but I've, to get it back, oh yeah, I'd pay, I'd pay 50 bucks a month and you don't even have a tier at that level. So just think about that. But if, 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 if any of that resonates with you, don't wait. Uh, uh, we really are in a position now where for at least a, a time I'm going to have to kind of, uh, Really work hard to get more people involved in supporting the show. We have the listeners. It's just uh, getting the attention of enough listeners, a small percentage of people. Um, uh, but people that are said, oh, okay, I'll do it now. You just go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus and sign up, uh, support the show. Even if you're not sure, sign up for they're all, all the trials are seven days and then you could change your mind. But at least then you've done something. You said, yes, it's unique. Yes, it really means something to me. Yes, it does something for me. No, I don't want to wait. Like, uh, I don't want it to go away. Um, so thanks. Uh, think about that. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus.
All right, everybody, it's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone. Uh, this is where I pop my peas, I get loud, I get your attention so that this show can keep coming out, this ad-supported version of the podcast for anybody who wants to listen to it. No cost, except for listening to the sponsors and stuff like that, because it's the people who support the sponsors or uh, support Sleep With Me directly who enable this. So, so why not take a few minutes to thank them? And I wanted to thank some people that got some Sleep With Me merch, got those Sleep With Me sleep phones doris chris and katie thank you doris thank you chris thank you katie went to sleep phones uh, sleep with me podcast.com slash sleep phones use the, the code sleep with me at checkout most comfortable way to listen to sleep with me so thank you doris thank you chris thank you katie and i would love to say your name on the sleepy supporter zone so go ahead and check out our sponsors you know try a free trial test something out let them know you know take the quiz on helix uh, helix sleep.com slash sleep let them know about it let me know about it let me know what mattress you got matched with and i can thank you right here and the sleepy supporter zone as well as hundreds of thousands of other people who are going to be getting a good night's sleep because of you so thank you all right the second part of the sleepy supporter zone is you getting the support you need right now if you're having a tough time there's resources international resources you could connect with right now in the show notes and you're worth it so use those resources please it's about being a part of positive change through our actions learning more taking action not just saying black lives matter not just saying stop api hate not just saying support ukraine and so many other things you know that, that we, we all have to choose hey what am i going to support let me learn more first you could do that in the show notes where you could see what sleep with me what i'm doing personally and what some members of this part of our community are doing but you could take other actions you know too but right now sleep with me supports the midnight mission in los angeles supporting people experiencing homelessness uh the trevor project all the life affirming and life saving work uh, the trevor project does and hand in hand and all the work hand in hand does it building community uh, so it can be long-term at peace and cooperation and love so uh those are three organizations that we support but there's plenty of other ones out there too i'd love to hear from you what you're supporting what actions you're taking all i want to do is empower you to be a part of positive change you know in in your world too so thank you so much uh oh mystery bart uh, there's a lot of people who help out on this show who are they chris posty post or some sounds like an earful wrote the theme song edits episodes too. carl w the lecture also edits episodes ashley too. kenny scotty jennifer runner, 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 runner. eric and the team let us down I am the mystery bar. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at JonathanMan.net. I'll write a song for you. Any reason at all. You can tell me the story and I'll make it personal. You see the kindness shine straight on through when the listeners form their own Facebook group. Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer. These are your moderators. You get support your scooter on Patreon. Buy the merch and support the sponsors. You can find anything you want at sleepwithmepodcast.com. And we're so proud that we could dance. Rusty Biscuit, Lois, and a like banana. Leah does the transcript. Thanks, Mystery Bard. Don't forget, if you want to get those sleep phones, most comfortable way to listen to Sleep With Me, just go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleep phones and use Sleep With Me at checkout. Thanks, everybody. And what do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it the bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake. It could be thoughts on your mind, you know, thoughts about the past, the present, the future, you know, thinking thoughts, uh, thought, thought, th- thoughts you're thinking about. I mean, I haven't used the word rumination in a while, but I do like, like uh, you know, my ruminations have ruminations. Rooms and rooms are ruin, rumination. I don't know if we said it that way, though. Come on down to rumin, rumination nation. Uh, we got rooms and rooms of rumination. Ru- here, rumination nation. Uh, you, uh, rumination nation. Probably don't want to, probably, uh, like, uh, I don't know why we're in business, uh, but, uh, we're open from, uh, when, when you get in bed till, uh, you know when.
uh, that's really what happens to me. Like, I mean, if you, if you relate to it, you say, I ruminate about rumination. What can I say? Uh, and they say, that's, that's actually, rumination nation doesn't know that its purpose is to say, hey, it's okay. I ruminate too. It's not easy. Uh, like, uh, I know that's why I invented, even though it has a sales pitch, like that we, we do sell used ruminations, uh, and that's really the trick. You come and you, you put, you donate your ruminations and we keep them there. And oh boy, do we keep them happy? Holy cow. I don't know if you've been out back. Uh, the reason we have rooms and rooms and rooms of rumination, rumination is because this is where room, room, room like, uh, I don't know, it's hard to say rumin, rum, ruminations co come to Rome free. Rome, Rome, if you want to, that's what we say to the ruminations we have here. Roam around all the rooms we have and, and all the space out back and uh, all the fun stuff. And um, first, first you say AI, I, I'm not kidding, that... Uh, at this moment, it's not been like uh, it's all imaginary, but we have a AI listening stations uh, where they just listen and they say, "Holy cow, you're right." Uh, to the ruminations, uh, they listen, and ideally, you know, then you could fall asleep. You send your ruminations our way, drop them off. Uh, we'll take good care of them. They're always there. You can always, you know, uh, you can always come get them back. Uh, we do, po yeah, we do power all our systems with the power, like, uh, like the extra power that's spilling off ruminations, uh, many, many gigawatts. And, uh, but yeah, we got these new things that listen to them. They say, oh yeah, holy cow, you're right. Uh, oh man. Like, uh, that's, uh, I mean, we're working on that, uh. And they, you know, the AI doesn't make those noises. It just types them out right now. But it's, just, oh, yeah. Oh. So let me think about that again. You're right. Let's run through that. Let's run through that 45 or 50 more times. Uh, how could I have handled that differently? You're right. Holy cow. Uh, so um, won't be good for me when AI is running the world, obviously. But I'll say, well, it's a time. It seemed like a great use. I didn't, I didn't realize you'd be in charge. I mean, I guess I did it imaginarily, but, uh, I, w you know, the thing is, I just wanted you to be, and they said, Scooter, that's what happened. Cause you said, well, this ruminating, listening to rumination will help you be more relatable to humans. And that's when it all happened. Uh, so sorry about that. Uh, from the future. Sorry about that. The good news is it's only happened in my imagination. Oh, boy. Where was I introducing a sleep? Oh, thoughts. Uh, anything coming up for you? Thoughts, feelings. That could be anything coming up, like, emotionally. Um, I wonder how many times that I don't remember that I've had a fake rumination store, though. Uh, but so it could be f feelings, emotions related to those thoughts or feelings that are just there, physical sensations. Uh, all those could be interrelated or the, it could just be one of those or, you know, multiple versions of each one. It could be changes in time, temperature, routine, travel, visitors, work schedules. You could be going through something, having something coming up, getting over something. Whatever it is, uh, I'm glad you're here w like because you deserve a good night's sleep. I said at the beginning of the show, I'll say it again. You deserve a bedtime you could look forward to or at least feel neutral about, a bedtime you don't have to dread. And that's why this show exists, because I used to dread bedtime so much, obviously, if you just listened. And uh, so I know how it feels. And, and I know it's like trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep, uh, like those things. And so do a lot of other people. I might not know exactly what you're going through. And maybe I've never been through it. Uh, but somebody listening probably has, and a lot of us, even if it's not me, know how it feels. Uh, so that's one of the reasons I make the show, or that's both reasons. You deserve a bedtime. You could get some rest in. So your life is more manageable, and so you could be out there flourishing. That means our world's a better place.
And I also know what it's like to be not in the positive version of that, uh, in the rigmarole. So that's why I make the show. What I'll do is I'll send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders, and superfluous tangents. So it means I'm going to go off topic. I'm going to get mixed up. I mean, it already happened, right? Then I'll ramble on and on and on about something that gets stuck in my head. Then I'll forget what I I'll say. What was I talking about? Didn't I open a store earlier on the podcast? And most people say, yeah, you, you're incorrectly using, and I said, oh, wow, I forgot, totally forgot about it. Uh, and this, by the way, an intro, uh, four intros ago, you also talked about, oh, man. And I said, uh, like, I, I honestly uh, slipped right in and out uh, of my brain. So that's uh, pointless meanders and superfluous tangents. My voice is creaky dulcet, meaning it's not traditionally soothing. It's just kind of barely listenable. Uh, because this is a podcast you just barely listen to. You can, uh, kind of like I was talking about with the AI, you say, uh-huh, uh-huh, Scoots, oh, really? Okay, interesting. And do you picture your place like a rug store or, or a, yeah, maybe like a rug and flooring store out front and then out back, more like, a, I don't know, like a, a fair and one of those tumble places and one of those inflatable places. And, uh, I don't know, some nice stuff for the ruminations to run. You know, they can't run, they run freely. They don't run free. They feel like they're like, because we just want, you know, in case you want them back, we say, okay, where is, uh, spilled milk, uh, 1,477 Q Omaha, Nebraska, uh, 1987. Okay, great. That, like, uh, yeah, so, like, uh, they've been claimed, reclaimed. Uh, it's time to reunite them with their, their, their ruminator. <laughs> uh, ruminator, uh, is, that's a nickname you don't want. Uh, but was, you know, no one calls people the ruminator. I tried to call someone the corrugator because they worked, uh, it's come up on the podcast, but it's been years. They worked at a cardboard box uh, company. And I started calling them the corrugator. Uh, they found it amusing. Like, uh, but like, you know, when like amusement, they say, oh, that's funny. Uh -huh. But I can, you know, once I like, just like the rumination, once I get something, then you're the core. I, like I said, I forgot. I'm sorry. I forgot your name. Their name actually started with. So that was like the, their name and corrugator. Like we're close. So it was helpful. And I even, like, they were not my friend. They were one of my siblings' friends. I mean, I'm friendly with them. But I still, everyone, I say, how's the old corrugator doing? So uh, that's what, I, there's a pointless meander because it doesn't have anything to do with anything. Um, what's he saying? Oh, podcast you don't really listen to, obviously. I'm also not here to put you to sleep. I'm here to keep you company while you fall asleep. There is no pressure to fall asleep. I'm going to be here for over an hour. And there's over 600 free ad-supported shows ready to go. So, the, or, uh, yeah, 600, I think. Uh, so those are ready for you if you need them. And um, I'm here to just to keep you company. Because if you can't sleep, I'm here to keep you company. If you, if you fall asleep, I'm here to keep you company. If you need a break during the day, I'm here to keep you company. If you wake up, I'm here to keep, you know, I'm here to be your boar friend, your boar bay, your boar sib, your boar bud, your neighbor, your boar burr, your boar bee, your boar bestie, your boar bruh, boar sib, whatever, you know, your friend in the deep dark night, really. But a friend you don't have any responsibilities for. You don't really have, you just kind of barely listen to me if you want. Uh, there's some people that have me at a, you know, below a mumble. So that's, uh, that's, uh, well, don't really listen to me. No, oh, the other things that throw people off when you first get here, this show is not for everybody, but it's almost for no one on their first try. Now there are people that they got it on their first try and they, they said, holy cow, this is it. I've been looking for this, uh, just right in that, my right amount, right amount of strangeness, the ruminator has arrived, uh. That's what I say when I get, when I come out back behind Rumination Nation. 
I say, the Ruminators arrived, uh, and everybody talks at once, just like you'd think. And then we all laugh, just like in the movies. Uh, and then I realize it's all in my imagination. Uh, uh, but just the laughing, you know, the, the, the idea that it, like, there'd be, it'd probably be more chaotic if it was an actual rumination nation. So, um, what else? Uh, Oh, so just give the show a few tries. That's what like over a million people have probably said. Hey, give it a few tries. See how it goes. Now, if you already know, it may be too late. You may have already sent me a, a strongly worded missive, as they say. No need to do that, though. If you haven't done it already, you could just go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you and check out the other sleep podcasts and sleepy stuff there. Because you deserve a good night's sleep either way. Well, you don't need to like me or like the show. All, all, you need, all you could do is give it a few tries and see how it goes. Um, you don't have to also don't have to send me a strongly worded missive, though, either. You could just check out another sleep podcast and maybe find the one that fits for you. Uh, but for the people that it, it, this show fits for, and it fits them so strongly. We've had people listening the whole, almost the whole time we've been in existence, supporting the show. So it, 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 if it works for you, you say, oh, wow, I didn't know I was looking for this, like I said. But so give it a few tries and just see how it goes, because you deserve a good night's sleep. All right, what else? Uh, oh, structurally, that's what also throws people off. The show is structured in a very specific way, uh, just to benefit the most amount of people it can. You can kind of adjust, but at first, you probably, if you kind of play it by ear, that, I don't know, you could see how it goes. You could start adjusting right away. But the show starts off with a greeting. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. So you feel seen and welcomed in. And you say, hey, I might check that podcast out. Then there's support. So paying for it's optional. Uh, or, yeah, it's ad supported. So you don't even have to pay if you don't want to. And there's actually a lot of people that, like, benefit from that that I've heard from. So, uh, like, I appreciate it. If, if you're not in a position to support the show, I'm, I'm really grateful I get to be here for you. And then I know you're out there listening and appreciating the show. Um, then there's the intro, which is separate from the support. But for some time, for some reason, when people, um, uh, like, dislike the, uh, the support idea, they, they lump the intro in with it because the intro is like, I don't know, starts at minute six or eight and runs till 20 or 25 minutes ish. Uh, but the intro is separate from the support. It's a show within a show meant to introduce you to the podcast and to ease you into bedtime, to be a transition period before the bedtime story, before you fall asleep, or before you, it eases you into bedtime, I guess I said it. Now, you could skip the intro. 2% of people do that. Um, you could fall asleep during the intro. That's great if you do. But for most listeners, the intro is somehow a part of their wind-down routine. And what I mean by that is some people are getting ready for bed. Some people are in bed getting comfortable, and a lot of people are doing some other relaxing activity, either in bed or somewhere else, uh, just winding down as they listen to the intro. Uh, because that's just like having a bedtime routine has been what's been shown to work. Um, and what works for me, 60 to 75% of the time. And then... Um, there's support after the intro, and then we'll talk about the Great British Bake Off B B Baking Show, and then we will, uh, there's thank yous at the end. So it's the structure of the show. It's why I make the show. I'm really glad you're here. here. I work really hard at your and I strive, and I really hope I can help you fall asleep. Thanks again for coming by, and here's a couple of ways we're able to do it for you for free twice a week. Sleep With Me is brought to you by Progressive. Most of you aren't just listening right now. You're driving, cleaning, and even exercising. But what if you could be saving money by switching to Progressive? Drivers who save by switching save nearly $750 on average. And auto customers qualify for an average of seven discounts. Multitask right now. Quote today at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National average 12 
12-month savings of $744 by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between June 2022 and May 2023. Potential savings will vary. Discounts not available in all states and situations. Hey, everybody, Scoots here. We're uh, back with the Bake Off, Bakers. And where are we here? What are we talking? Uh, I got to find my page. Uh, Pick assembly. Got to put my tablet on airplane mode because uh, we share uh, we share a uh, Netflix account. But yeah, it's Patissier week, uh, and it's a semifinal. That's uh, whatever collection seven episode nine. Starts with this car segment, which I guess because Paul's a car guy, I think that's, I, I don't I totally don't know all the lore of uh, Great British Bake Off, but uh, Noel's asking Sandy if it's her car, and we see this fancy sports car with a spoiler and neon, but Paul's in the driver's seat, uh, but you can't really see him unless you're paying attention. And then they say, see you down there, like Paul drives to the tent. And then we see one of those Power Wheels cars, uh, it's a Porsche. And Sandy says, oh, do you want to ride? And we get uh, the preview, Baker's Tackle, high-end patissier, geometry, pastry rolling, domed signature, symmetrical technical. Boy, I like that. Uh, sugar Cube Showstopper. Remember the sugar cubes? Uh, excellent as required. Uh, it is the semifinal. Smallest of slip-ups. Uh, so always dash their dreams. So great alliteration. And definitely picked a difficult one, Steph says. And then we get the theme. And we open. And we see the tent from the outside. Sandy says, four remaining bakers. The bakers are last lucky three. They walk into the tent, uh, talking heads, semifinal, regardless of what happens. Alice, don't drop the ball. Um, they all have ties on. For, like, uh, uh, don't, like, who doesn't want to be in the final? So the elf ties on, which takes a while uh, to figure out. Uh, David has a fish shirt on, and his tie is like a lot of rainbow colors. Uh, Rosie has a pink tie. Alice has a kind of iridescent purple tie. And Steph has, I think, a black and white striped tie. Let's see, a black and white striped tie. And then everybody comes out, uh, and they say, Hey, Bakers, you're tied up, because uh, even uh, everybody... Sandy's got a blue tie on. Does Noel have a tie on? No tie for Noel or Sandy or Prue or, or, Pru or Paul. Sandy participates, though. We appreciate it. Uh, and it's a tribute to Henry. Domed tartlets is what they have to do. And Sandy's excited about these domed tartlets, eight of them. I don't know if it's a joke or what. Uh, eight beautifully decorated domed tartlets. Uh, Sweet pastry case, exquisitely decorated, two and a half hours. Get set, bake. Uh, and then they take off the ties because it's so hot. Uh, everybody's, just, you know, feeling the uh, pressure of being in the semifinal. And Paul says, yeah, this is a French pastry. Very much a je ne sais quoi. Of, uh, they have to be identical, neat as pins, Bruce says. Holy cow. Uh, timing, precision, and the setting, uh, flaky, buttery, sweet pastry, and a punch, uh, at the top of it. Uh, this is the hardest week we've done so far, Bruce says, uh, so we want to find the three best bakers for the final. Bruce and necklace matches her glasses, a uh, nice red. See stuff getting squirted into the, everybody's working on their enriched dough, I assume. And, oh, they were in size so, like, so Henry could live on through them because uh, he got voted out last week or whatever, or taken out. And this is a risky one because everybody's got to uh, make a uh, pastry crust and a dome tartlet. And so Alice is up first, and they say, tell us about your domed tart. Uh, maca, orange, and hazelnut domed tarts. And Sandy's like, yeah, that's, I'll go for it. Uh, orange curd, hazelnut praline, 
espresso buttercream chocolate mirror glaze. And her tartlets are going to be large. And Paul says, oh, that's large. Uh, more yumminess that way, Alice says. Uh, Paul does like chocolate and hazelnut. So they say thank you. They move on. Pat Sable, Pate Sable is what Steph's working on. It's a rich pastry, almost like a shortbread. It sounds French. White chocolate glaze, raspberry lemon, dark chocolate drizzle, gold leaf, pâté sablé. Welcome to the stage. Uh, coming in at number two, oh, they say pâté sablé sounds like an radio announcer. Uh, so, Steph, you won the most star bakers. You think you're going to make it to the final? Taking each bake as it comes. Good luck, Steph. Uh, then Alice is lying in her pastry c- c- cases so there's no gaps or leaks. Rosie's also doing pâté sablé or whatever. Uh, it should be neat and precise. But she says she's also kind of cobbling it together. Then Noel really, uh, don't know about this conversation he has with Alice. He says, uh, if you get through the final, do, do you think you're good then? And she goes, my family thinks I'm good. And he goes, yeah, family always does. And my mom uh, laughs at my gigs and uh, my dad too. Even when the audience doesn't, uh, I think you're funny. Then we go to David. I guess it's with Rosie. I don't know if this conversation, it's later. So David's going to bake his or chill his and then cut it. And everybody else is putting theirs in the oven. And then they're working on the fillings for the dome, zesting lemons, uh, like blending things, uh, cooking stuff. Uh, liqueur splits or spritz is what David's working on. Aperitif domed tarts, aperitif dome jelly, leche flan, roasted rhubarb, chopped hazelnuts, uh, botanical Italian spirit. How you feeling? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, good luck, David. David tries to breathe. Uh, Rosie tries to breathe. Uh, Rosie's also using some alcohol. Lemon, raspberry, and mint with a hint of gin. Pulled sugar strands, silver leaf. And maybe I'm overdoing it, uh, but I, I'll get it done. So lemon, lemon raspberry, mint dome tartlets, uh, mint creme pats, raspberry gin, lemon barbarian cream dome, yuzu jelly. Oh, this is the conversation. I just said, what? Like, no, he's kind of joking, but he says in such a straight laced way, he says, I can't believe you made it this far. And she goes, thank you. Uh, and he goes, I'm joking. Semifinal's good. Good enough. Uh, you want to do go to the final, though? Uh, he goes, that's like operating on a pony. Uh, uh, or the pony might say, did you make it to the final? And she goes, I don't think I like you anymore. And then he says, I'm joking. You've done amazingly well. So this is just a hard thing about being awkward. Uh, I mean, both of them are kind of relatably awkward uh, for me. More so Rosie. I guess I'm not as funny and calm as Noel. Chocolate maca mousse. You got to freeze the mousse in these uh, things uh, so it comes out right. Otherwise, uh, so that's molding them. Oh, the things are called molds so that you achieve the dome. You don't want them to be uh, uh, like uh, gooey. You want them to pop out nicely. So everybody says, bloom and heck, uh, domed tart. You got to have the domes work. Uh, Put them in the freezer for as long as possible. And hopefully they set. Uh, That's everybody's wish. We see the outside of the tent. Time call. Anybody seen Sandy? We do the burlap sack, Sandy jokes halfway through. And uh, then uh, time to take the tarts out of the oven. Alice has come out. David's come out. Uh, Steph's come out. David's cutting his circles. Rosie's happy. Like, uh, she says, I don't know about this color. Uh, Pastry's cooked. I don't care. Uh, Alice's are done. Steph's working on hers. Uh, everybody's, uh, different, uh, you know, next to working on their jellies, uh, to get the balance right. Uh, overpower, uzu jelly, uh, citrus, really strong. And, uh, yeah, raspberry jelly, fruit, uh, orange curd. 
and it's got to be sick because the jelly has to support the dome. The Knowles ask, and um, Rosie, more about uh, has, she, has you worked, she worked with any primates? No. I have worked with pigs because she's a vet uh, who she takes care of. Uh, he says, wow, pigs, really? Bulls. Uh, and he goes, okay. Bet you uh, that was tough. Uh, then uh, double cream, double cream, double cream for Alice. Seven separate elements for these dome. Uh, so there's, you know, there's a chance to showcase or make, make a misstep. Espresso buttercream, rhubarb, roasted rhubarb in the oven. Creme pat, raspberry mint, uh, but I don't know. It's uh, like uh, Alice is coming together. It's the last half hour. I don't like it where everything's fine, and then it's like, oh, holy cow. Uh, and Noel's got googly eyes on. Half an hour left. Oh, dear. So everybody's running around. Uh, Steph's like, I don't feel calm. Never feel calm. Rosie talks about flapping and okay, well, let's hide any dodgy bits in our mirror glaze. Uh, so everybody's working on the mirror glaze and David talks about the temperature. His is too hot right now, 32. So everybody's trying to cool it down in the fridge or freezer. David's rhubarb comes out, looks tasty. Uh, then, and then construction begins. Uh, Rosie's creme pat is uh, too thin. Egypt, 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 Egypt. Uh, and uh, Alice is having trouble spreading her praline, I think. Uh, and then David's, like, uh, design of uh, looks really fancy, in my opinion. And then trying to get chocolate drizzle going, getting their jellies. Ten minutes left. Uh, domed tartlet, Sandy says yes. And this is the time of uh, testing to see if your domes are frozen. You got a frozen dome or not, uh, Fanoni Roan. So can we get them out uh, and see? Alice has come out okay. Steph first scoops out her hole for her jelly. But uh, it seems like hers are structurally sound and then puts her jelly in. And David's look like scotch eggs. Uh, Center Parks, uh, Dome Tartlets, uh, Sandy, or, uh, was that Alice is flipping hers, Steph's assembling hers, uh, they were way more set at home, though, and Alice is coding hers, so everybody's doing a little bit different batch of coding and assembling, and... Rosie's feels like hers look like rubbish. Steph's working on her uh, thing. Five minutes left. Uh, so everybody's trying to hustle. You know, it's hard to tell how this is edited, though. Piping buttercream. So Alice is just trying to pipe her buttercream around her dome. But she's stressed. Everybody else is putting the finishing touches on. Hands getting clammy. Alice can't go, grip the piping bag. One minute left. Uh, so crunch. Cr David's got like a crunch around his. And uh, yeah, everybody's trying to fancify theirs. Uh, make them look good. Gold leaf, silver leaf. Uh, time is up. David pops him a little, uh, like some sort of champagne or something to go with. Uh, and Noel says, I'll take the bottle of that. Uh, Rosie's like, this is uh, not sad, oh boy. And Noel says, at least I got dome tartlets. Uh, Steph says, I don't know about how mine look either. And we go outside the tent again. We see a bird. Everybody's sitting there nicely. And now it's time for Paul and Prue to give their opinion. Hello, David. Uh, let's see what we got here. And David says, oh, let's see what we do have here. Uh, they look unusual, but in a good way. Bruce says, I've never seen anything like that in a pastry shop. Uh, I'd want to buy it. Uh, Paul likes a uniform, but he says, use smaller nuts next time. They look more professional. They cut his. They start digging in. 
and uh, love the flavor, love the bitterness. Uh, jelly forms delicious. Uh, aperitif looks good. I like the flavor. I don't think it. Oh, I don't think it looks good, but I like the flavors. Rhubarb cuts through. And uh, Prue takes a sip of whatever the drink is as a palate cleanser. And Noel pretends to take three more glasses. Then we have Rosie up next. Uh, and Rosie kind of frowns. Is not a, okay, love the color. Size is good. Base doesn't look too bad. I like to pull sugar. Uh, but the crumb pat, yeah, I didn't say uh Need more cooking, too soft, spills out, and jelly's perfect. It's just too bad about the creme, prat, prat, creme pat. Then Steph's up next, uh, lemon white chocolate dome tarts. Uh, very neat at the bottom. Oh, not very neat, uh, but I like the design and the color. Crew says Paul didn't like the bottom. And Paul cuts through, and uh, Prue takes a bite. A lemon meringue pie. Sharpness is there, flavors there. Bit too soft though. Bit soft, but if you were eating as a pudding with a spoon, it'd be delicious. Uh, nearly perfect. Then we go to Alice Maca hazelnut orange domed tarts, and let's see. They say. The dome's shiny. That's fantastic. Pipe Piping's not very good, though. Pity, because uh, one of them's pretty good, but some are all over the place. Overall look is professional. They cut in, and they sit, Paul says, oh my goodness, it held together nicely. Brute takes a bite. I don't know if Paul's allowed to take a bite on camera. He chews on camera. Lovely, crisp, buttery feel, crumbles in the mouth. Uh, Melts, orange comes through, big tartlet, but really good. Uh, just piping let you down. Flavors and textures uh, and stunning base. Flavors gorgeous, well done. I haven't got a handshake in quite a while. Uh, Alice is talking heads, happy with the piping. David's like, wow, they're harsh today. The little issues they're picking up on. Uh, Rosie says, yeah, my crumb pad, I don't know. And uh, stuff says, I knew my moose who didn't set. I don't know why it didn't set. Uh, and now it's a technical for the patissier, which nobody likes. Uh, not going to be easy, is it? We see a rising shot of the tents. And you might have practiced now, but uh, now it's going to be a mystery. And Prue has set this one up. Uh, any words of wisdom? It's going to be difficult to make it look good, she says. Good luck uh, in this, you know, okay, so it's going to be tech. The cuties have to leave the tent. Uh, off you go. Prue's uh, respraying Paul's tan. Gateau Saint-Honoré. Uh, and it's named after Saint-Honoré. Patron saint of bakers and pastry chefs. Uh, Prue leaf of his day without the necklaces. Uh, uh, it's a round ghetto shape, uh, but this one's going to be rectangular. Two layers, first layer puff pastry, and then followed by shoe buns dipped in sweet caramel and a silky creme chaboost. Uh, and they say, do you know what a chaboost is? And they say, and then a second layer with Chantilly cream, three and a half hours. And it doesn't look like it sounds like with it. But then the, there's a lot of writing on the things. Uh, Alice says, I can kind of picture it. Everybody's trying not to stress. Uh, David doesn't know what he's doing. Rosie made this a long time ago, but never made it again. And Steph says, this is a difficult one. We see trees and leaves, table talk. Pretty complicated, Paul says. Bruce says, yeah, it's not supposed to be easy. Gato son on rye or whatever. Uh, it's uh, shoe buns have to be the right size. Creams have to have the right texture. Pastry has to be trimmed. And uh, puff pastry is going to be a challenge. But it's one of the most wonderful patissiers. Uh, cream, cream and caramel. It's a satiny creme chaboost. It does sound delicious. 
It's uh, creme patissier with egg whites to lighten it. Uh, crispy puff, uh, nicely set shoe buns, softness from the shaboose and the Chantilly cream. Combination's fantastic. Uh, it's worth it, uh, Bruce says. Does sound delicious. Uh, okay, so puff pastry, full puff. Uh, full puff is required. Uh, so that's the hard part. Uh, no, David hasn't done, he's a rough puff guy because it's uh, a lot harder, the full puff. You can't overwork the dough. You got to roll it out thin. Then you got to hammer down some butter and put the butter on the dough and then turn and chill. So it's like a book fold type thing. Uh, and uh, to get the butter in, Alice's dough or uh, Rosie's dough is sticky. So everybody tries to get it cool and puts it in the fridge. And then it's time to make a shoe. Shoe fly, shoe fly pie. Right? Remember the shoe people. Uh, oh, wait, I got to look this up because uh, I don't know. And then David says, remember the shoe people and these things, the song, the shoe, shoe, shoe people. It looks like it was an animated series, The Shoe People. Let's see what Wikipedia has to say about it. Uh, animated television series in the UK, 1987. Uh, TV AM. And broadcast to 6,200 or 62 countries. Uh, 87 and 92. So it was on the air for a while. Because I said, huh, I wonder. Like, David seems like he's in his 20s. Uh, it was uh, the first series from the West to be shown in the former Soviet Union. 25 million books uh, created by James Driscoll. Who noticed the style and appearance of people's shoes revealed something about their owners. And he wondered what stories the shoes could tell about them. So it sounds like a podcast episode. Uh, then there was the New Adventures of the Shoe People. That started on 1992. Be Oh, Behive Yourself, uh, Wellington, Spot of bo Major Spot of Bother, The Purple Plorple. Yeah, this is like, uh, there was American Dub on Nickelodeon, on Eureka's Castle, then changes by Nick Jr., 1987, and uh, there's the Shoe People Complete Series DVDs. It was released on VHS, too. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's a little bit about the Shoe People. Uh, and David knows the song. Shoo, 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 shoo. Steph looks at him. Do, 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 do. So, yeah, everybody's working on their shoe mix, uh, butter, w flour, Eggs, I think. Uh, it's a pastry. It's got a form of V-shape, according to Steph. But David's is a little firm, like Excalibur. But he says, yeah, that's what Michael told me. It's got a form of triangle. And Noel says, Michael's not even in here anymore. Uh, so everybody's focusing. Rosie's is very thin, though, which is not uh, uh, like a, a good. Uh, everybody else is piping theirs. Trying to get them the right size. And they put them in the oven 10 minutes or so. And uh, Rosie says, I'll see if mine puff up. We see the external thing halfway through. Noel says a few times, no one's listening. Anybody listening? Steph, uh, halfway through. Alice, halfway through. Now they got to make this rough puff. Uh, they got to fold it again or ro like a book turn. So you kind of fold it uh, a couple times. That's where you start to get the lamination. And uh, then I guess you put it back in the free fridge or freezer. And that's where that um, those marble cutting boards are coming in handy. Shoes are puffing up. Shoe in, Sandy says. Rosies are not puffing the way she wants them. So it's a puff pastry, I guess. Uh, Hers are like bricks, so oh no. I guess I got to start again. David and uh, everybody starts trying to roll their pastry, 28 centimeters square. And it should be sheets of laminated butter. Uh, it's kind of chunky. Uh, uh, if the layers are too thin, the butter will burst through. 
So David's like, I better chill mine again. Rosie's sh shoe is even thinner this time. So she's like, I don't know what to do. It failed. Uh, throws that out. Gr 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 shoe bun leftovers. Uh, and she's like, now my pastry's bur butter's bursting through my pastry. I'm going to have to redo everything. And they have one hour left. Uh, and she goes, I don't know. Uh, so then the puff pastries go in the oven. You got to put a tray on top so it doesn't over puff. Uh, and uh, Sandy tries to, she helps Rosie. Hey, she's very mod. Or, uh, she goes, I make shoe all the time. Sandy says, okay, slow down. Uh, Wasn't too thin. I couldn't buy. Okay, just breathe. Uh, it's going to be okay. You got this. You do. Okay, next up is creme shaboost, 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 shaboost. It's a creme pat and then a creme shaboost. Steph says, if I concentrated in French, I'd know what shaboost means. Uh, je ne sais pas. So creme pat, you got to thick it, but you don't want it to split. Uh, and there's creme patissier, you got stiff egg whites, maybe mousse-like, uh, Steph says. I don't know. You got to put gelatin in there. The leaves are gelatin. Leaves are three. Let them be. Uh, and then uh, Rosie says, I'm going to stick with my original pastry. I don't have time. Steph's egg whites look ropey. We got to fold it in. And then you put it in your shoe. And then Rosie's working on her third round of shoe buns. But this is it. I got to pipe. It's got to work. Those are a little thicker. Everybody's checking their uh, pastry puff. And not sure if it's Alice's looks pretty good. David's is very puffy and uh, not a great puff, he says. Uh, and then uh, Rosie says, I got to make a bit crumb pad again because I put gelatin in. And they have a half hour left. Uh, and everybody's like, okay, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. Rosie puts her shoe buns in. Then you got to make caramel. And, you know, got to watch the temperature of the caramel. Don't want it to be burnt. But Alice's is like, I think mine is burnt. Too late now. Maybe I'll try to do the top one lighter. Rosie's like, okay, my shoe buns are puffing. 15 minutes left. Uh, then you got to assemble it. Cut the pastry in half into two rectangles. And... Uh, Alice is working on her second caramel, ribbon of creme shaboost in the middle, and uh, then fill each uh, shoe bun. Are they going in or not? It's tough to tell. Then you got to uh, put them together. Steph's like, I don't know which ones are the right size. No, what do you think? He goes, okay, these ones. And then you kind of make like a sandwich of uh, puff pastry. What are those things called? Shaboos, uh, uh, shoe ball, shoe balls, which are puff pastries and, uh, or creme puffs, cream puffs. That's what those are called. I think in the U S, uh, and, uh, Rosie's just trying to hurry to get hers together. Alice is like, I got two tone with my caramel. Steph looks like she's done. Rosie's trying to get hers together and time is up. Rosie gets done. And then everybody just automatically brings them up, puts them behind their pictures. They don't need us anymore, uh, uh, Sandy says. Then everybody's sitting, Paul and Brew come out, get to St. Honoré or whatever honor. And it should be silky smooth, shaboos to caramel, chantilly cream. And we're going to start with David's. They don't know that, though. It doesn't look too bad. All the same size. Pastry soggy, butter poured out. So, and they say trying to taste the shaboost. It's split. Uh, good caramel, though, or caramel, uh, crackly and thin, nice pastry. Not perfect, but okay. Then Steph uh, lost a bit of butter, but there is some flake. Uh, shoe buns are regular in color. Some are dark, some are light. And uh, this is like a shaboost. It tastes okay, but it's not the right consistency. Then they go on to Alice's overwhipped, uh, feels solid. 
Um, they taste it. Caramel's overdone. Uh, you could taste it uh, too strong. Then they go to Rosie's. Looks delicate. It's upside down, but nice crisp pastry. Has a shaboost. Uh, pretty smooth. Good. Uh, and puffs good as well. Uh, I wouldn't complain about this one, even though it's just upside down, but that's fine. Uh, this is going to be interesting. And then this is like the ultimate irony is that they do it. Uh, and last place is Alice. Uh, and uh, problems with Chantilly, Caramel, and the Shaboost. Third place is Steph, uh, Untidy. Too much caramel, lumpy, but delicious. Uh, and then who's first, who's second? Second place is David. Uh, no one could believe it. Rosie came in first. She's about to cry. Not bad, but the shaboost is like scrambled eggs and soggy. And that means you, you Rosie, well done. Uh, 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 profiteroles are upside down, but otherwise delicious. Uh, she's laughing hysterically as the talking heads. Uh, can't believe it. Sorry, she's apologizing to the producer. I just can't believe it. Uh, that was my most stressful bake, and I won it. Uh, and Dave is like, second again, but that'll get me to the final. So, and Alice says, yeah, they're going to be picky. So, uh, we're going to have to, I'm going to have to pick it up again tomorrow. Steph says, yeah, there's not many people left now. So not many second chances. Then we see the tent and them walking in. And then they talk about Steph was star baker, but she's struggling. Uh, signature was delicious, but texture is wrong. David struggled in the signature. Alice has been steady, but she did have poor technical. Who's going to be in no room for error, Paul says. Uh, and somebody says, well, maybe not be the person who triumphs, but the person who falls. Uh, and they all laugh uh, like Paul's a villain. And then everybody comes out and they say, okay, welcome to Showstopper, semifinal Showstopper. We want you to create a spectacular sugar glass display case, transparent and edible depiction of something you hold precious in your life. Uh, can't be no, though. Sandy can fit in a glass case. Uh, any shape you like, uh, but it must have one baked element on the inside. Cakes, biscuits, you have four and a half hours, get ready, get set, bake. Uh, and everybody's trying to stay calm uh, to get into the final. Surreal. Uh, try not to think about it. Uh, everybody's, you know, yeah. This is a celebration of Patissier, Bruce says. Uh, and the glass cabinet should showcase it. Press precision. Uh, crystal clear. Like a pane of glass. Uh, and uh, think about what you're going to put in the middle. It should be high-class, exquisite pastries. Pulses, any flavors, banana, raspberry, coffee, but lots of different textures. Jelly, mousses, ganache, sponge cake has to work together. She feels it's married. Uh, tricky challenge, artist, architect, and baker. This is a semifinal. Better be amazing, Peru says. And Alice is working on, like, thing. We've got a glass case to make, uh, so it is timing. But what you're going to put in the case is up to them. Must have at least one baked element. Uh, David's making cake dough. Seth's making a Jacan sponge. Alice's making a Genoese sponge. Uh, this is quite a challenge. Something else is on Rosie's mind. Brioche. Uh, she's like, the concept of time and family. And she goes, you know, I've been busy with this thing. I haven't seen my family that much, uh, except when they're cleaning the kitchen. So I'm doing a thyme maca creme pat, uh, caramel creme, creme pat, chocolate ganache uh, on a clock face. And Paul says, how's your timing going? Uh, she goes, well, I'm going to get everything ready and then focus on the bi box. Uh, well, good luck today, Rosie. Uh, David's getting some uh, beetroot uh, for in parsnip, uh, but it's going to be a sweet cake, a natural sugar so from those. Steph's doing six layers. Uh, 
Six thin layers, uh, brioche dough, Alice's Genoese sponge, coral reef, uh, a glass case of how fr fragile the oceans are. So it's a save our oceans case uh, with a cake, uh, five separately set elements, isomalt corals, chocolate shells, chocolate bavois, and a lot of layers. Uh, so you got to get your timing right, Paul says. Uh, good luck, Alice. We'll leave you to it. And then everybody's putting their cakes in the oven or their bakes in the oven. Steph's got all hers. Rose is putting her tartlets, blind baking. Genoese sponge, 15 minutes for Alice. Uh, next up, ganache for Rosie. Buttercream for David. Uh, shoe pastry for Rosie after yesterday. Alice Entreme Mousse, or yeah, uh, I don't know what that is, but uh, got to get to work. Uh, and not everybody's doing the same strategy as Alice. Uh, David's like, I haven't planned this down to the wire, but, uh, he, you know, David's pretty competent. So David's doing a glass terrarium, a tower of sponges, beetroot prunes, parsnips, apricots, chocolate soil, hazelnuts, almonds. And then Paul says a cake. Uh, I don't want a, 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 a cake a cake uh, thing. Uh, and then uh, Rosie's working on these little discs for her shoe buns to give it a chocolate crack or a sugar crackle. Alice is working on her entreme, lemon and raspberry. Oh, no, that's uh, Steph's ganache. Uh, uh, opera cake, uh, ode to my grandpa. Uh, Derek Percival George, uh, Night at the Opera. And hers will be a frameless uh, case. Uh, chocolate grays, orange macaroons. Have you done it at home? Yeah, but uh, something's going to go wrong. Uh, you'll be fine, Steph. Uh, Noel's not an opera fan. Everything starts to come out of the oven. Ta tart trouble is something... So uh, everybody starts working on it. Sugar glass cabinet, Paul says, uh, should be tough. Uh, Genoese sponge, uh, Alice is really going for it. Uh, curd, bavois, Genoese sponge. Uh, so Alice is getting her layers ready. Creme boire, buttercream for Steph. Steph's doing an opera cake and macaroons. Uh, haven't made, barely made macaroons, though, Steph says. Rosie's doing uh, some uh, little things, uh, and David's using this fancy cutter for his uh, cake. Uh, a lot of sponge, uh, but it's just a cake, they say. Then Rosie has a propeller cap, or I mean, uh, uh, Sandy has a propeller cap, a uh, bit of a breeze. Uh, and then everybody's trying, you know, everybody's working on assembly, getting things in the oven, getting them out of the oven, putting them together, putting them in the fridge or the freezer. And Sandy says, how you doing, uh, uh, Rosie? Uh, functional shoe, uh, come on. Okay, and then everybody has to do, bi a lot of people are doing a fr biscuit frame for their uh, glass. David's is very uh, fancy. Like, uh, since he's doing a terrarium, like Art deco -y almost. Uh, and everybody else is like, holy cow. Noel says, you're halfway through. He's sitting up on a counter. And they use isomalt sugar substitute that doesn't caramelize. It'll stay clear. It's just sugar, inverted sugar. Uh, we looked that up one time. I can't remember. You got to do it at 300 degrees. Uh, got to wear gloves. Uh, Double gloves for Rosie. And, uh, yeah, so everybody's working on their isomalt sugars. And Noel says, we should do a, a spinoff together with animals. Uh, so people are working on their frames. Uh, that's going to give their structural strength. Uh, and then they pour their isomalt into the frame. Uh, Steph's just making planes, like she's just making a glass box or sugar glass box without, uh, frames. And then it's going to glue it together. And David and, um, Alice have some color in their glass. Then they're trying to get all the bubbles out of the glass uh, in different ways. Steph's like, whatever, I don't care. 
I think. I mean, she's like, uh, Alice is like, this is the least of my worries. Uh, and Steph says, I don't know if this is my bag making this glass. Uh, and then everybody's trying to see if it's transparent, which is kind of hard with sugar. And then uh, Sandy plays a joke on Noel with delicious crisps, which is pretty funny, even though he says, we're double act, uh, right? Uh, she says, yes, yeah, surprise. Uh, so she gets a kick out of it. Then Baker's got an hour left. Uh, Noel says, Sandy, uh, and then everybody's like, am I behind? Holy cow, I got to do macaroons. I don't know if these are too chewy. Stay calm. Mirror glaze, lots of jogging. Uh, Paul staring at David. Uh, Sandy says, you're going to get, get it to work. Stay calm. Uh, I got to go calm down Rosie. Uh, and then uh, get David's too calm. Then people are starting to sh- build their sh- uh, their uh, cake structures or whatever other thing structures. And put cream on and decorate them. Isomalt coral, buttercream. David's doing a lot of fancy piping. And uh, he's like, you're quick. And David's like, yeah, God, you got to be quick, dude. Uh, everybody's trying to breathe. And then they're like, we still got to do our glass boxes. Uh, then they have a half hour, which is glass box time, where you got to construct it. Uh, because if you break it, uh, well, you know, that's one of the parts of the thing. So everybody starts using sugar to glue it together. And they're like, is this going to work? Uh, so, yeah, everybody's trying different techniques. Uh, and it's like w- one person is really hard to assemble a box of, uh, I don't know how they do it, to be honest. Uh Steph's looks like really cool. Like almost hers looks like it's made of ice uh, because it doesn't have a frame. But I was wondering, would the judges say it's too simplistic? Uh, okay, then they're making different uh, fra- or their de- finer decorations and their mirror glazes. Uh, and uh, which uh, one minute left, everybody says, holy cow, you got to get your frame on there. And that's a moment of. Uh, Everybody's frame gets on nicely and uh, is holding together. Uh, and they're trying to glue the tops on. As David's and Steph's were already finished, so, and the time is up. And everybody's like, holy cow. And a bit of a mess, but it's done. Al, or Rosie says, uh, and then it's time for judgment uh, for show stopping sugar cabinets. Uh, Steph's up first. A night at the opera, and uh, kind of looks like something you see at a party. Pretty clear, like old antique glass. A uh, good job, and it comes right off, like uh, very neat. Very dark chocolate on the cake. Uh, very pretty, and uh, a lot of layers. Uh, and they get in there. And Bruce just like, holy cow, you're a very good baker, Stephanie. You really are. Sponge is a little bit too dense, but you got so many layers. Uh, and this is very patissier in a style. You got the macaroons, very neat. Uh, this isn't a criticism, but I don't understand the difference between Steph's cake and David's cake. Uh, but because uh, David gets criticized, he's up next. His, I mean, his... Uh, Structure is very fancy, very neat. Uh, colored glass, triangles, a bit modeled in places or something. And then his cake is not flat, so they they don't like that. But he has got a lot of layers, too. I just don't know if it's like whatever. I, I don't know anything about cooking. So it is wonderfully light, like a good carrot cake, uh, spicy. And they say, this is very David. I don't know it was yours. Uh, but this is, doesn't have any delicacy. Uh, it's wayward. Uh, we need something more with more finesse and patis, but yeah, patissier. We wanted you to show off your patissier work. So David says, "Holy cow!" Then uh, Rosie's up next, uh, and uh, say, "Okay, look of it is like old glass. Good concept, uh, but a bit simplistic. This is supposed to be a showpiece, a showstopper." 
and everything's the same color. Uh, it's interesting, the concept, uh, uh, but it's a concept that puts them together and not the dish. It's a bit boring and dry, Paul says, uh, and flowery, no flavor, Bruce says. Uh, and the little tart's delicious, uh, but uh, it's a little off the mark, small. Uh, we need some, this is supposed to be a, pe- a centerpiece. Uh, don't know if it works. Uh, so that's uh, not, you know, that's got to be tough. Uh, then Alice is next. Hers is painted, has blue waves, so you can't see through it, but it's kind of part of the concept. Uh, and they say, well, geez, if it was clear, and then they take the cake out, it's very sea, sea like uh, ocean a uh, say, wow, uh, we should have been able to see that. Uh, and they start on the cake, uh, lovely flavor, Bruce says, uh, fresh raspberries is nice. Uh, and a uh, strong part of it's the raspberry comes through. Weakness is the moose. Displays good, shows off your theme. And then the talking heads out says, well, I don't know. I hope I turned it around. Uh, Rosie goes, yeah, this isn't great. I'm gutted, uh, just a bit gutted. Uh, David's like, I didn't do a patissier, and it's patissier week. Uh, Am I going to be penalized uh, or how much? And we see some leaves blowing in the wind, top of the tent, side of the tent, uh, table talk, tight showstopper. How do we feel? It's moved around. Uh, Alice did, did, did good. Steph did great. She bounced back. Uh, and not impressed, so with uh, David's sandwich of uh, sponge, sponge cakes, uh, not a technically a patissier. Oh, technically a patissier. His cabinet was great, though. And elegant. Uh, and then Alice, a little cakes, no flavor. Uh, Starbaker's not going to be difficult, but uh, who's going to leave is tough. And this is the worst time to go out, obviously. Five hours, how long are you going to talk for? Uh, it could be a while. And then we go back, everybody's holding hands. Uh, and Paul and Prue come out, and Ola gets the easy job, or the fun job, Star Baker. And who's going straight through the final. And that is, uh, what do they say? Who was Star Baker? They show everybody's faces first, and then they say, Alice, uh, well done. You're in the final. Uh, and Sandy gets a tough job. Uh, it was difficult when he was not going through the final. And I just want to say well done to everybody. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's really hard on Sandy. Uh, she seems to always have to do the toughest ones. Uh, but, I mean, it's just, I don't know. I don't know how they decide it. Every other week, uh, she says, Rosie, I'm so sorry. And everybody hugs Rosie. It was a lot of tears, uh, a lot of hugs. Uh, so sorry, sweetheart. Uh, Rosie's gutted. Uh, did so well. Uh, but, uh, it was that last bake and Bruce says, you tr- it wasn't a great collection of stuff together and it didn't, you didn't pull it off. Paul says, Rosie slipped up. Uh, that's the saddest part. Uh, bloody good baker. David could have gone. And if Rosie didn't slip up, David might've gone home. Uh, so David's like, I got lucky. Uh, kisses Alice, uh, Alice, uh, is one to watch, getting stronger and stronger, Paul says. Uh, Alice says, it might, this might be a tough week for me between the finals. Uh, three talented bakers. Steph says, oh, my God. Well done, Steph. Three bakes to go. Artistic bakers, imaginative. They better bring their A game. Next week's final could be one of the best finals we have. David's happy. I'm in the finals. And the episode comes to a close. Uh, Another nice one. Good night, everybody. I want to thank everybody that became a patron recently. I want to thank uh, Leslie, Cynthia, and Lizzie. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And good night. Sabrina, Stephanie, and Alex. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And good night. Hannah, Jasmine, and Tyler. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And good night. James, Nicole, and Lucia. Thanks. Thanks. And good night. Aubrey, Stephen, and Hannah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Good night. 
Alex N and Lee. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Good night. Sonia, Jeremy and Laura. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Good night. Renata, Jeremy and Alexis. Thanks. Thanks. Good night. And Alex, Joanne, and Wendy. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Thanks, everybody who supports the show. Literally, the show comes out uh, because of the people that support the show on Patreon or support our sponsors. Yeah, that's how we're able to come out free, free twice a week. Uh, and you can support the show freely uh, by spreading the word, checking out our sponsors and stuff like that. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, and good night. All right, everybody, Scoots here. I'm doing our month in review uh, on Sleep With Me Plus, uh, which is similar if you're still listening on Patreon, if you could think about moving over, but it's going to be similar to, to what uh, you you would have seen there this month. And as far as the ad-free episodes, a lot of them are, are coming out in the um, ad-supported feed that you, you all listen to as well. Um, I got to find my, the right podcast app. Uh, so I was also buying time because, uh, okay. So like, uh, so on sleep with me plus one of the main differences, everything is separated out into uh, its own feeds. Uh, so there's four different podcasts. I'm going to start with the bonus episode podcast. So it just has bonus shows. Uh, and on March 2nd, um, a mayor tour, Welcome to Scooterville, a posty special edition super deluxe episode came out. These are really cool. They come out on uh, a couple Saturdays a month. And these are uh, something that's just really important, been really important to me. Um, ideally, down the road, we'll have a budget to do more or somebody else even do a version two. But it's basically Chris Posty Posterson from Sounds Like an Ear, Ear, Earful. Uh, it takes an episode of Sleep With Me and reimagines it uh, in a sense, uh, it, which that's pretty much it. Like, uh, that's all the instructions for Chris. Hey, take an episode, reimagine it. But this year, Chris has been doing this for years. So in the bonus feed, it's years and years and years of this. As a matter of fact, in the bonus feed, I'm looking at there's 377 episodes. I think that's in the uh, Boar Besties feed. But uh, so right now in 2020... Four? Is that what year it is? Chris is doing um, this uh, Scooterville series. So definitely worth checking out if you're like, love sleep with me. You're looking for something like a little bit different with some sound design. You want to listen to it during the day. Or a lot of people, <laughs> when they start to support the show and they discover these, this is what they sleep to because everybody's a little bit different. Uh, what else we got in this feed? Uh, audio news, uh, Scooterville. Oh, contact. Uh, um, TNG contact part two came out since I think we last recorded this. And then a fearless flyer episode is about to come out. I think it may be this week. Um, the February fearless flyer episode. Okay. Then boar besties and boar friends can also get a feed with all intro and all night shows. So Thursday night, an all intro episode came out a oh, weird, the all, uh, the, uh, the all night episode, um, I might've archived it, uh, but Big Farm in the Sky PI, huh, I guess uh, the, there's an all night episode that's going to come out or should be in this feed that is, so, so doesn't seem to be there. So this is good. I'm checking this. This is live quality control. Maybe it's in another feed. I put it in the wrong feed. But yeah, um, not sure which one it is either. So I'll have to look into that. So that's interesting. Okay, then lo- then you get a, a, a feed with uh, ad free full episodes. And, uh, so they don't have any, um, they have, uh, they don't have the, uh, supporter zone. They don't have the sponsor stuff. They don't have, um, the, uh, mystery barred music or the thank yous at the end, but they are something that, uh, um, it, cause you can listen to that in the ad supported version. Right. But, um, so let's see, episode 12, 20, 1245 came out Sunday. That was Great British Bake Off episode eight. Multiplex episode three came out. Hickory Dickory Farms. Uh, Ren Fair with Ray came out March 3rd, 1243, 1242, Bake Off, Episode 7 came out, February 25th, uh, Multiplex, Episode 2 came out, Julius J. Juice, um, what else we got, uh, uh, 1240, Apple Cider Redo, that was Trader Joe's a Shop and Cook episode, big retraction in that one, you know, it retracted my opinion on Apple Cider Donuts from Trader Joe's. So, yeah, and then the audio news. And then in story only, we had, uh, uh, let's see, the same thing. Uh, Everything comes out on Sleep With Me Plus. If you're, this is so cool. There's something we only have been able to do since we moved to a new platform is we're able to put out the story only episodes and the, 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 
the full episodes on the same day because they're in separate podcasts. We couldn't do that on the old platform because everything would just been too clogged up and it would just been too confusing for a large number of people. So now, yeah, story only, there's like a lot of story only fans and yeah, they got the same thing. Uh, Great British Bake Off 8, Multiplex 3, Ren Fair with Ray, Great British 7, Multiplex 2, Trader Joe's Shop and Cook, Apple Cider, uh, then uh, Dessert Week, uh, Great British Bake Off, whatever, whatever, Episode 6, Multiplex 1, uh, Wandering Towers, Board Game Unboxing. So yeah, that's everything that came out this week. Uh, I don't have my calendar in front of me. We've been working, I've been re- working really hard at the planning calendar and we got some exciting stuff coming up to sleep to. That's so exciting. You don't need to listen to it. Uh, what do we have? Multiplex 7 I recorded yesterday. Started writing Multiplex 8 today. Uh, these are these are a couple months away, but the Guild, the web series of the Guild, uh, we did the uh, part of season one of that. And we're definitely going to do season one of the that and probably season two maybe go on i don't know maybe maybe do season one and season two and take a break those will be coming out uh, late spring early summer um i came up with two new ideas uh for uh random tuesday episodes one with pillow like uh, other plush friends a pillow pet and then another one that um would be called the uh marble vagabond and those were episode ideas that came out of intros. Uh, neither of those has been recorded, though. Those intros were recorded. The Marble Vagabond intro will be in b- part two of our coverage of the movie Bring It On. Uh, what else have we recorded? Uh, we did a, oh, I guess in the last month, uh, we did an episode called Will Wonk Wong uh, Interactive Experience, Immersive Adventure, which I was really happy with. And that's going to be a new genre of Sleep With Me style show of like... Uh, Poorly run immersive adve- immersive experiences like the one like that kind of what got a lot of press uh, and we got to do we got to work on the audio for something very similar but it was called the Wildy Wanga uh, experience uh, also not very not a very high budget experience but at least it had audio from Scoots or a narrator like Scoots so that'll come out late spring early summer. And then our our crossover series, uh, we got th- th- three episodes done, episode two, three, and four from season one. Uh, so that'll be coming out this spring, too, and summer. So, yeah, that's everything right now. And thanks so much. Uh, if you're listening to this a free, free feed, it'd be great uh, if you think about supporting the show at sleepingwithmepodcast.com slash plus. Uh, this enables us to do everything we do. And those of you that support the sponsors, we also really count on those of you that just spread the word about the show. So thank you for doing that. And, uh, that's it. Uh, good night, everybody.